And I'm sitting there with the blood in my hand, it's lit up. And I'm just asking myself, I'm like, how did you get here? Assalamu alaikum guys and we are back with another Jahiliya diary and before we get into that Jahiliya diary I do want to say a huge 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 Jazakallah khair guys for the love and the support that you've given me on my last Jahiliya diary guys I can't stress to you the amount of love and support you guys gave me through the, the likes, the thumbs ups, the shares and just the views and subscriptions guys it means the world to me share this moment with you guys means a lot to me the fact that you would like to listen and learn from these experiences and you know there was a lot of people who approached me were like you know SQ why don't you act like you're getting a message from someone you're reading their message and you know you're you're telling them about that incident. You explain to them about how you knew of someone in that incident or tell someone about a life story, but don't mention it was you. Mention that someone that you knew of that was doing all these things. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward and bless all these people and multiple suggestions that I received about this Jahiliya diary. I also want to let you know that that's the most fakest way of me doing anything. You see, for others that might work, for me it doesn't. I can't be fake. I can't act like I'm doing something when I'm really not doing something. If I'm sharing Sharing something with you guys is to let you know that I've been through this experience and I want you to learn from my mistakes I don't want you to make the mistakes that I've made if I could save someone time effort and energy from making the same mistakes that I did if I could save you from that mistake that I made Alhamdulillah that's what this is all about the Jahiliya Diaries is essentially a way for those who are in the problem to get out the problem those who've been through the problem realize that yo it's, I'm not alone in this it's, you know I can vibe with this for the parents who have children and don't know how to communicate to their children or explain to them how these things are incorrect that's what the Jahiliya Diaries are for and it's also for you to get to know a little bit more about me because who I once used to be has made me into who I am today all the companions that we absolutely adore and love it's not that we love them for just who they are right now we love the journey that they've taken to get to where they are the fact that we can witness and understand how Khalid bin Walid used to attack the Muslims and he became a Muslim and he started fighting for the Muslims that's absolutely inspiring that someone can have a negative past and make a positive future. That's what this is all about. So I want you to join me on this journey to learn more about how I am who I am today and it'll help you draw closest to Allah as well. Today's Jahiliya Diary is about the first time that I smoked weed. Just so you know, I'm putting myself in a very difficult situation when I'm sharing these things and I don't want you to think that the Jahiliya Diaries is easy. It's not easy to be transparent and talk to you about these things because I'm worried about how people might perceive me. I'm worried about how my professional life might affect me as well too. For those of you who don't know, I'm a school teacher and there's students of mine who watch my YouTube channel and watch my Instagram stuff and for them to find out that their teacher has done these things, that's a big deal. But the reason I'm not afraid of this is because if I could save my own students from going to the park and trying marijuana or going and doing something incorrect through one of my life lessons, I'm more than happy to do so. This experience starts off just like any other one and that starts from a very bad friend. Friend. There was this girl named Amanda who was friends with this girl that I really really liked. Now I thought that the way for me to get close to that girl that I really liked was to befriend her friend Amanda so that me and her could be cool if that makes any sense. Me and Amanda became really really cool and close because my intention was to get close to that girl that I really liked and wherever Amanda was that girl was. So if I was close to Amanda I would be close to that girl. Science. And the thing about Amanda was that she had a very unique way of convincing people to do stuff that that she's doing. Whenever she would do something that she'd enjoy, she would want you to do that thing as well that she enjoyed. And if you didn't do that thing, you were no longer cool, you were no longer allowed to hang out with her. Her friendship was very conditional. I want us to pause right here. How many of us have friends today that are like that way? That we are afraid to say no to our friends from doing something that's incorrect, that might upset our parents, that might upset Allah. The reason we don't say no to them is because we're afraid of losing them as a friend. Literally, that's the only reason we don't want to say no to them because we don't want them to think negatively of us. We don't want them to think that we're not cool anymore. We don't want to lose their friendship. So we are willing to sacrifice our own beliefs and values only for one purpose so that we don't lose someone who's not even good for us and they're not even a good influence in the first place. They had invited me to come over. When I got over there, they were like, hey, do you want to try marijuana? When you think about committing a sin, it's not like you wake up in the morning and you're like, oh, 
I'm going to commit a sin today. That's not how it works. Most of the sins that we committed are not premeditated. Some are, of course, where you're planning to do something incorrect, but most of the time it's through life experiences and just events that are taking place. What ended up happening in that process was Amanda introduced me to marijuana and she was just like, hey, do you want to smoke some weed? Now, again, I know her personality. If I said no, she would be like, go. I couldn't lose the girl that I really wanted to be with. So me being who I was, how I was easily influenced, how I was afraid of losing friendship and losing the girl that I really liked, I said, sure. I was excited for the point that I'm like, oh my God, I'm about to do something different that I've never done before. We go in the back garden or the backyard, depending on where you are. And she she hands me this blunt, you know, this this weed cigarette, cig weed. We're in this haram circle right now where everyone is passing the blunt around. I remember once it was passing down, I'm just waiting for it to come my turn, right? And I'm, in a way, I'm dreading it. I'm dreading from it happening because I would never think in my wildest dreams that I would ever smoke weed. I would never. If you were to ask SQ, the 12 year old, would you ever do this? I'd be like, no, weed is bad for you. It's not good for you. I would never smoke weed, blah, blah, blah. Now you're asking, I think the 19, 18, 19 year old SQ, and I'm sitting there with the blunt in my hand. It's lit up. And I'm just asking myself, I'm like, how did you get here? How, how how did this happen? Like, when 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 did you, when did how did this happen? You were this person that would never do this, yet you're standing here with a blunt in your hand, and how how could that be? That feeling wore off super quick. Next thing you know, I'm trying it. I have to tell you right now, it was the most wonderful experience that I've ever had in my life. Immediately, the lights became brighter. All of a sudden, my senses became heightened and everything sounded so loud. And I feel like I could hear cars from miles away. I felt like my spider senses were tingling or something. I felt like a superhero. I walked different. I spoke differently. I just had this swagger to me that just didn't exist prior to this. I felt limitless. I felt like, where has this been my whole life? I feel incredible. I tasted some cookies. Them cookies tasted delicious. I was watching this thing on YouTube or something funny. It was just hysterical. I couldn't control myself. I would listen to music and it just sounded absolutely incredible. Like, where has this feeling been my entire life? What marijuana and alcohol and intoxicants and khimar essentially does to us is that it takes over our senses and it makes us not realize any type of limits. Our senses become completely clouded. Our judgment becomes completely completely clouded. Our nafs becomes completely clouded. Our nafs is something that we're always trying our best to control when we're sober. Imagine trying to control your nafs when you are intoxicated, when you are high, when you are under the influence. It's already tough to control it. Now you add that, your nafs is going to go wild. This is the greatest day of my life. I felt like this was life-changing. It was a generational type experience for me. And I remember walking home and I remember going home and the feeling started to wear off. And, and and the way I would like to describe the feeling of wearing off, try to imagine like taking a cough syrup when you're sick, like a NyQuil or a Theraflu. You know, you take it, you get knocked out immediately. But then in the morning when you wake up, you still feel kind of drowsy. You still feel kind of like, uh, like it's still in my system. That's how coming down from your high is. And I remember my first thought when I was coming down from my high was, how do I get high again? How do I get high again? You know, people often say that marijuana is the gateway drug. They're right, because it's a gateway for you to experience what it feels like to be high. You're chasing the first high, and I'm here to tell you right now, you will never be able to get that first high. Awa is essentially invitation. How many of us have given invitation to someone to do something wrong? I was given dawa to smoke marijuana. How many of us are giving dawa to do wrong things? How many of us are being given dawa to do wrong things? How many of us are delivering the dawah to do wrong things? This is a question that you and I have to ask ourselves. So immediately I'm thinking about how can I get high again? The next day I go to work and I can't stop talking about it. Like I'm telling everyone about this amazing experience I had. And the thing about having marijuana or smoking marijuana or doing something like this, it puts you in a club that not many other people could relate. So if someone can't relate to, they'll be like, oh bro, that's stupid. Getting high is dumb. You obviously gravitate towards those who do those sort of things as well. So I'm at work and I'm thinking, man, I need to smoke again like that was the most incredible feeling ever I need to smoke again now I'm new to this it's less than 24 hours I'm like where do I go how do I do this so I hit up a man she's like yeah of course come over after work I go over and it's an exciting experience because I'm just like yes you know I got it I I'm gonna do it again smoke a lot more than I did yesterday I've realized that I smoked way too much I had 
no idea where I was. All that coolness from the previous day went away. Some of you might be like, the moral of the lesson is this, don't get too high or don't smoke too much. The reason Allah has not allowed that for you is because it's not good for you. There's certain people might be like, but what about medicinal use? That's between you and your general practitioner. That's between you and getting some scholarly information. I'm talking about recreational use. I've realized I got way too, like everything is spinning. I don't know where I am. I go in the toilet and I just start throwing up. Marijuana heightens your senses overall. So when I'm throwing up, I feel like I'm throwing up my organs. Like everything is just coming out my body. I am, I'm over the toilet like crying. Please, please, please Allah, get me out of this situation. Get me out of this situation, Allah. And what's so interesting about this is why is it that when we're in the worst of situations, situations by the way that we put ourselves in, why is it that we call out to Allah then? Why is our connection with Allah shallow and where when I need something from you, I, I, I ask you Allah, when I don't need you Allah, I back away from you Allah. We need to do a better job establishing a relationship with Allah all the time. So my head is over that toilet. I'm like, Allah, please, 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 please get me less high. Get me off this high Allah. And I just want to, I will never do this again. Allah, I will never Never ever do this again, Allah. Please, 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 please help me, Allah. I'm stuck. I'm high, Allah. I'm scared, Allah. I'm scared. Get out the bathroom, grab my stuff. I tell the girl that I have to go. I tell Amanda I gotta leave. I walk out, get some fresh air, clear my head, start feeling better. And you know the first thing that I do when I start feeling better? I invite my best friend at that time to smoke with me again. So less than 24 hours, I've smoked two times, I've gotten way too high, I just got sick. Now, after I just made that dua, that prayer, I'm ready to start smoking again. That's the reality. I now became the person who was giving dawah to invite people to the wrong path. That's what I was doing. And you know what? My best friend wasn't the first person that I did that to. And that was actually one of the reasons that our friendship broke up. Because he felt that I was a bad influence to him. He felt that this guy is not a good person that I should be hanging out with. And guess what? His mom told him to suggest him to get away from me. He got new friends and I'm getting left over there like, yo, why is this dude, str you know, distancing himself from me? Why are you distancing yourself from me? But guess what? Thank you for distancing yourself from you because I was a bad friend to you. I was a bad friend. I gave Dawa. I invited someone to the wrong path. And you know what? I invited other people to the wrong path. Do you know how many people I convinced to smoke with me? First timers, they would never ever thought about doing it. They never wanted to do it, but I'm telling them it's so cool. Do it, do it, do it. Do you know how many people that that comes back to me on? I pray and I ask Allah to obviously forgive me. I pray that Allah, that I've become a better person, Allah. Now Allah, I'm trying my best to give da'wah to the people and invite the same energy that I invited people to the wrong path, Allah. I'm trying to invite people to the right path. That's how I'm trying to atone for my mistakes that I've made. That's why I'm going in. That's why I'm going hard. That's why I'm making these videos because you need to know that this is wrong. But how? Everybody wants to act like they're this perfect Muslim. MashaAllah, look at me, how good I am. But you know what? I'm not good. I'm not good. I struggle daily. I struggle till this day. Don't think for one second that I don't want to smoke a blood today. Don't think for one second that I don't want to get high today. Don't think that. That's not what this is. Allah knows how much I might want to do something. But you know what? I don't do it for the sake of Allah. It's about doing things to please Allah and not yourself. If it's something that pleases you but displeases Allah, leave it for the sake of Allah. Allah will reward you. Telling kids to stay away from drugs, stay away from marijuana. How? They're exposed to these things all the time through music, through culture, through movies, through friendships. How? Do you put them in the madrasa? Is that how you want to do? You want to send them back home to Yemen? Is that how you want to handle it? Look, handle it that way. Send them, send them somewhere. Send them far away from all the fitra. Find it, it won't work. Until we're not able to have these open conversations where we, we share our life lessons and we teach children from our mistakes. Cause that's how kids learn. Kids learn from seeing mistakes. You, you as the parent or you as the adult, putting yourself in a vulnerable position where you're willing to share a mistake of yours shows that you're a human being. 
And if you have a bad relationship with a sibling or your parents or, you know, with your children, just know it's because you guys aren't viewing each other as a human beings. You guys view each other as these positions. So you have to make sure that you're ready to live the decisions you've made. You have to make sure that you're ready to stand in front of Allah and explain yourself. I went from, subhanAllah, I went from being a regular dude to within 24 hours behaving like a crackhead, like a drug addict and where I'm, I'm, I'm like wanting this thing all over again. and doing something wrong and yet I'm still willing to do it. May Allah forgive me. May Allah protect all you out there. Those of you who are struggling with weed, you can get out of this. If you really want to get out of it, change your circle of friends. It, it allows accessibility. The more you're around people who are doing it, the more you want to. Even if you make a resolve with yourself that, hey, I'm never going to smoke in my life again. But if you're with friends who do smoke, naturally you're going to take the blood as well. If you're stuck in this situation right now, and you're watching this, just know that you can get out of it. Just change your circle of friends. And if you're someone who's been through there, more power to you, man. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you and I'm happy that you're on the right path. And if you're someone who's thinking about doing this, please learn from your bro. Learn from your big bro's mistakes and know that you shouldn't be doing this. And if you're a parent out there, make sure that you understand what your children are going through because it ain't easy. Ah! Jazakallah khair guys for watching this. It means a lot to me. I, you have no idea how stressful this was. Just the amount of pausing I had to just take just to like... Like dealing with these memories is not easy, but just know that it acts like a sense of therapy for me. Just telling you about these things feels like a therapy to me. So just not click for watching. I really appreciate you guys. If you benefited from this, please hit this with a thumbs up. If you've gained any other benefit and you think that someone could relate to this, share this video with them as well. I would love, love, love your feedback. So please drop your feedback in the comments below. It really helps me out if you guys share and like and comment on these videos. And if you're new to this channel, please subscribe because I'm giving you an insight as to who I am today and how I used to be because the only way that you can understand me for who I am today is by understanding who I used to be and that's what these Jahiliya diaries are for guys to get a little bit more of insight as to how I am or who I am or how I became who I am today I love you all for the sake of Allah thank you so much for tuning in once again if there's a specific incident or a Jahiliya story that you would like to listen to please make the request drop that request down below I love you all for the sake of Allah I'm out